The standard model is the result of the knowledge gleaned by scientists since the age of Democritus. The standard model's accuracy has been verified on countless occasions in experiments at huge particle accelerators. This center is located some 50 kilometers from Chicago. One of the most powerful such instruments, the Tevatron, is housed here. We are in the Fermi State Laboratory, known as the Fermi Lab. It was here that Professor Leon Letterman, the Nobel Prize winner for physics in 1988, discovered the quark known as bottom, the fifth quark found since Gelman predicted their existence. The discovery was a major step in corroborating the accuracy of the standard model. So the total standard model picture of matter is six quarks, six leptons. And their social behavior is determined by forces. And the forces themselves are carried by particles. There's the strong force holding quarks together, the electro electromagnetic force, which uh, binds electrons to nuclei to make atoms, and there's the weak force, which creates radioactivity. Uh, so our standard model has these three forces, these six quarks and six leptons. The Tevatron has played a key role in the history of the quark. Thanks to this instrument, the quark known as top was found, and the standard model structure was completed. The Tevatron is a circular vacuum tunnel. Its length is six and a half kilometers. In the Tevatron, hydrogen proton beams are driven by 1,020 magnetos and reach the incredible speed of 298,000 kilometers per second. In other words, in just one second, a particle travels the length of this circuit a total of 45,846 times. This is a rendition of the collision in which the top quark was discovered in 1995. A proton and an antiproton collided at nearly the speed of light. As a result, the top quark and its respective antiquark were released. The standard model is, for the time being, the best description we have of the intriguing world of subatomic particles. But it is not the end of the road. Its validity depends on somebody, someday, confirming the existence of a yet undiscovered entity in the already crowded subatomic world, the most wanted of all particles, the so-called Higgs's boson. This story begins in the 1960s. Peter Higgs, a theoretical physicist at Edinburgh University, imagined that every particle whose behavior was explained by the standard model must interact with this unknown particle. It was this interactive force that gave rise to the property known as mass. That's to say, the stronger the interactive force, the larger the particle mass. The proving of Higgs's theory will be a truly historical event. Science will have brought us closer to the origins of everything. The only problem is, the elusive boson remains, as yet, undiscovered. But particle hunters around the globe continue to search. In fact, many of them have set their hopes on this machine, the LHC. We are now entering the premises of the European Center for Nuclear Research, better known as CERN. This center is, along with Fermilab, the most prestigious such project in atomic research. Once this was the home of the LEP. The LEP was an underground accelerator measuring 27 kilometers in circumference and located near the French-Swiss border. The LEP began operating in August of 1989 and there were attempts to detect the famous Higgs's boson. 
There were even times when it seemed as if the particle had appeared. But alas, they were just false alarms. Towards the end of the year 2000, the LEP was finally retired. The LHC will replace it. It is a marvelous machine indeed, and great things are expected of it in the 21st century. The LHC will be the most powerful particle accelerator in the world and will begin operating in 2005. You never know what a new machine will discover, this has to be said, because um, that has happened in the past, that machines done for doing something, they did a completely different uh, discovery. But uh, certainly the LHC is supposed to explore completely the issue of the X particle. And uh, the other thing that seems within the realm of LHC is the issue of supersymmetric particles and whether they are related to the dark matter of the universe. If this is so, if the answer to the dark matter in the universe is supersymmetric particles, they should fall into the domain explored by the LHC. Everybody hopes the coveted Higgs's boson will one day appear. But what if someone proves that this particle doesn't exist? In that case, scientists would simply have to go back to the drawing board and review each and every particle research study carried out over the last 50 years. But fortunately, it appears that the probabilities of that happening are very slim. In the meantime, Scientists are busy trying to solve some other nasty conundrums posed by the standard model. For example, why is it that there are so many particles and forces in nature? Is this how the universe was created, or is there some other simpler explanation? Solving questions like these would actually be akin to explaining everything. It would constitute the ultimate hypothesis of the universe. It would be the theory to end all theories. The most disturbing question of all may be how to account for the four forces that govern the universe under just one common criterion, a dream also known as the unified theory of physics. Forces can also be construed as interactions, and they are nature's glue. They hold things together, all the different elementary components, be they molecules, atoms, quarks, or leptons. Gravity is the most familiar force of the four, and it's the only one that does not figure in the standard model. Of course, thanks to gravity, we live with our feet on the ground and the planets revolve around the sun. But another much stronger force is that of electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is what bonds negatively charged electrons to atoms' positively charged nuclei. This force governs chemical reactions, and therefore, life itself. Less visible interactions are those that occur inside the nucleus of an atom. The weak nuclear force that is the cause of radioactivity, and the strong force that bonds quarks. Of course, gravity is obviously present on an astronomical scale because it is visible. But when we're talking about particles with very little mass, very minute mass counts, then gravity among these particles is, is very weak. We have to probe to be able to know in detail if the description of gravity is truly accurate. 
Initially, there are theories that do advance the possibility of unifying gravity with the other three already unified forces.